Hi everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and in this video I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get up and running with Microsoft Edge for Windows, Android, Mac OS, and iOS. I'm using Edge for Windows 10, but most of the features I'll be going over will also apply to other versions of Edge as well. Some menu icons might just be located in some different places. Edge is a web browser just like Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, and Apple's Safari. Edge is essentially the Chromium-based evolution of the age-old Internet Explorer web browser. To get started with Edge, let's take a look at how the address bar works. So the address bar is located up here at the top of our screen, and from the address bar we can either enter a web address to go to a website directly, so I could just go to my website here, or alternatively in the address bar, just like in Chrome and other browsers, we can actually just search. So I could just enter the ants and Alex, delete the .com, and it does a search. Now right now it searches Bing, you can see my website comes up there, the about page, and in a little while I'll show you how you can change your default search engine to say Google if you want to. But that's a quick way to either just access a website or to search one of your search engines. Notice at the top left of the browser we also have the back, forward, and refresh buttons, those are very important, that's where those are located. Of course you can always refresh a page with Control R on a Windows computer or Command R on a Mac computer. If you've used Google Chrome before, you may notice that the user interface of Edge looks very similar. That's because both browsers were built on the open source Chromium architecture. And we'll talk about this a bit more throughout the tutorial. Okay, so now we know how to visit websites, let's take a look at how we can use multiple tabs in Edge. You can open up a new tab just by clicking on the plus icon, which will always be located to the right of the last tab that you have open. So if we hit plus, you'll notice it opens up a new tab. If you like keyboard shortcuts, on a Windows computer you can press Control T to open up a new tab, or on a Mac you can press Command T. So we could just then go to a website here. So now we have our two tabs open, and we can just click on the tabs to easily go back and forth between them. So we have our search, and we have my website. So you can have really as many tabs open as you'd like, uh, so you don't have to keep going back and forth between websites. Uh, you can just quickly go from one tab to another. Now to close a tab, you can just hit the X on that tab itself, so we could hit either of these X's, or if you like keyboard shortcuts, on a Windows computer you can do Control W to close the current tab, and on a Mac, Command W. Now with tabs we can also rearrange the order of them, so I can just click a tab and drag it to the place that I'd like. So if I had 10 tabs open here, I could rearrange them however I would like. Now at the same time, I can also drag one of these tabs out, and it brings it into a new window, so we can see we now have two edge windows here, and if I said, okay, you know, I'm done with using two windows, I want it back into one window, you could just grab the tab, and you could bring it back into the other window, and we now have both tabs in the same window. Before we move forward, I just want to mention that I'll be going at a pretty quick pace in this video to get as much information in as possible. Remember, you can always pause and rewind if you need to, and it may be helpful to follow along in your own edge browser. Okay, so now that we've talked about accessing websites and using tabs, let's talk about favorites in edge. Favorites allow you to easily save a website so that you can access it just by one click later on without having to enter the address into your address bar. So to add a favorite in Edge, we first need to be on the website that we want a favorite. So I'm on a website right now, so that works. Then we're going to go up to the address bar, and you'll notice at the very end of the address bar we have this star icon. And when we mouse over it, it says add this page to favorites. So let's go ahead and click on the star, and a little window appears. Uh, first of all, we could change the name of the favorite if we wanted to. It's going to take the page name by default, so I'll just leave that as it is. And then we can decide where we want to put this favorite. So let's go ahead and drop this down. By default, we can either add it into our favorites bar, which I'll show you in a second is a bar that we can display right up here, so we can easily just click on all of our favorites that are in the favorites bar to access those pages. Or we could just dump it into the other favorites folder, which is just a default folder that's included here in Edge. Now we could also hit this choose another folder option. And when we do that, another window appears where we could actually create a folder right from here. So uh, I have the favorites bar selected, so if I create a folder now, it's going to create it within the favorites bar. But that's actually quite useful, and I'll show you why in a second. So let's just create this folder called tech websites. Okay, so now we have the tech websites folder selected. Let's just go ahead and hit save. So you'll notice that up here in our address bar, the star is now filled in blue, which means this page is bookmarked. So let's take a look at how we can access our bookmarks. Uh, to add a bookmark, we clicked on this star, but there's another star just outside the address bar, and when we mouse over it, it says Favorites, and when we click on it, we get a drop-down with all of our favorites. Now we do need to open up this Favorites bar drop-down, and you'll see we have our tech websites 
folder. And then within that, we have the website that we added to our favorites. So if I wanted to access this website, I could just click on it right from here. And we're already here, but you'll notice that the page is reloading. Uh, so it reloaded and we accessed that favorite. If you like keyboard shortcuts, by the way, you can press Control D on a Windows computer or Command D on a Mac to add a new favorite. Now let's go back to our favorites drop down here. I want to show you a few other options in here. So first of all, you can manage your favorites right from this window and you can do so one by right clicking on them. So if I right click on this favorite that we added, you'll notice that I could rename it. I could actually edit the URL. I could even delete it from here. At the same time, I can also drag and drop these around. So I could drag this to the other favorites folder if I wanted to. I could drag it back into tech websites. At the top here, we could add a new favorite by clicking on this star button. Uh, we'd have to manually enter the web address. We can also create a new folder. We can search for our favorites by clicking on the magnifying glass. And then if we click on the three little dots, we have some more options. So first of all, I've been talking about this elusive favorites bar. You'll notice that we have an option right here to show the favorites bar. If I click on that, we can decide, do we always want to show the favorites bar? Do we want it to never be shown or only on the new tab page, which is what it's set to by default, which means, you know, when we open a new tab, we're brought to this page, which I'm going to talk about later on. And you can see here we have our favorites bar. And this is why I mentioned folders are quite useful on the favorites bar, because you'll notice when I click on that favorite folder, all of the favorites within that folder appear. So, you know, essentially I could have maybe 10 favorites folders here, each with like 20 favorites in them. So I could show, you know, 200 favorites up here very easily, all accessible with just two clicks. Click on the folder, then click on the website. Now let's still go ahead and close this tab. Uh, by default, we went to our favorites and we clicked on the three dots, clicked on show favorites bar. By default, it's only on new tabs. But if we select always and hit done, you'll notice that our favorites bar is now displaying everywhere. So that's a pretty popular option uh, that I recommend if you make use of favorites that you go ahead and display your favorites bar. From these three little dots, we could also import our favorites or export them from here as well. And then we can also click on this manage favorites button. And this will open up a new tab where we can, you know, create folders in here, we could add new favorites, it just gives you a bigger screen to manage them. I'll tell you that personally, I can manage my favorites pretty well, just from this drop down right here, I rarely go to this open tab where I can see them kind of in a bigger picture. But if you are doing a lot of work with favorites, this is definitely a useful option to have. So I wanted to show it to you. Okay, so now let's talk about collections here in Edge. So to the right of the favorites drop down, we have this other section and it's called collections. And if I click on that, we can add this page to a collection. Uh, we have to go through this little tutorial here first, ironically. So let's just get through that. Okay, so now we can add this page to a collection. So we could hit the add current page button. What this does is it saves this page for us and it actually saves it offline as well. So if we were, you know, at a cafe somewhere and we had internet and we wanted to read a page later on when we're hiking up a mountain or something like that, we're not going to have internet. We could add it here to our collections and that page would then be available offline. Now this is often used for things that you want to read later, but you might not want to keep forever. If you want to keep it forever, we're going to add it to our favorites. But if we just want to read it later and then get rid of it, we can add it to our collections. So uh, if you're looking to do some offline reading, that is definitely a useful feature. To the right of the collections button, we have a drop down that allows us to manage the profile that we're signed into here in Edge. Using a profile allows your browsing history, favorites, and customization settings to be synced to the Edge and Chrome browsers whenever you log into your account. That's right, Edge and Chrome will sync. So if you've been using Chrome and you want to switch to Edge or vice versa, all of your data should sync over seamlessly. This is also where you could add additional profiles here to Edge. You notice we have this add profile button. So that's useful when you have multiple people that are going to be using the same computer. They can each have their own profile with their own favorites, with their own customization settings. Another user in the household sits down to use Edge and they can log into their profile and have access to all of their information. Okay, so in a minute here, I'm going to take a look at some of the Edge settings. But first of all, I want to talk about the new tab page. So let's open up a new tab. And you'll notice that this is what the new tab page looks like by default. And we've got some cool things here. We can search the web easily. We have some favorites down here at the bottom. You can see the favorite that I added earlier is here. We also have the weather in the top left. Uh, if you scroll down, you'll start to get some news and stuff like that. So we have a few different customization options here. First of all, we can go up to the top right and we can click on this gear icon. And there's some default page layouts that we can select. So by default, we're on the inspirational new tab page we could choose the focused layout, which is kind of a minimalistic view. We could also choose the informational layout, which kind of gives us more news and that sort of thing. Um, and we could also create a custom layout if we wanted to. 
I'm just going to go back to the inspirational for now. In addition to the options up there at the top right, we also have this button down here at the bottom that says personalize. And from here we can choose our interests. So by default we have all these interests selected, but you could say, hey, maybe I'm not interested in news. I could unselect this interest. I could also go over here to the left and I could search for interests with the search box or just kind of click through and find some things I'm interested in. And then those will be the types of stories that you see on your new tab page. So uh, that's a really useful way to kind of customize your Microsoft Edge experience. Okay, so now let's talk about some advanced options here in Edge and how we can customize our experience more by adding a home page. Like in Chrome, to access more options, I'm going to go up here to the top right of the browser and I'm going to click on the three little dots. Now from here we have some options. So first of all, this is how we could open a private window. You can also do that, as you can see, with Control shift n or Command shift n on Mac. We could also access our favorites from here. We can access our browsing history, so we can access any pages that we've previously visited. We can access all of our downloads. You can add some apps to Microsoft Edge. So if you click on the Manage Apps button, uh, you can browse through some apps that might be useful to you. You can also add extensions here in Edge, and these can be the same extensions that you use in Google Chrome because they're now both built on Chromium. So if you've been using Google Chrome and you say, well, I, you know, the only reason I'm not using Edge is because I can't use my Chrome extensions, that's no longer a good excuse because you can use all of the same extensions that you can use in Google Chrome here in Microsoft Edge. Notice a few other options here, accessing our collections, printing. Uh, we also have this read aloud option, which is a relatively new feature. It will read the page aloud for us. So that's very useful for those who are uh, vision impaired users, or sometimes we all just don't want to read and we want to have it read to us. So that's a very nice feature. In the more tools section, we could actually cast the current page to a device. Uh, so if we're watching like a YouTube video, we could cast that to a TV with this feature. Uh, you can also access developer tools from here. So if you're developing websites and stuff, that is a very useful feature. Okay, so now let's move into the advanced settings by clicking on this settings option here at the bottom of the dropdown. So there are quite a few settings in here. I'm not going to go over every single one, but I am going to go over the important ones. So first of all, when we access our settings, we're in the profile section. So this is where we can manage our profiles, which again, we can do a little bit of that up here at the dropdown that I looked at earlier. Uh, but you can see that from here, we could manage our passwords that are saved to this account. We could manage any payment info that's saved to this account. And if you're saving addresses, so that's like when you order something from Amazon and it asks for your address and you can just auto fill it. If you need to make a change to one of your addresses, you could do that in here as well. And if you are going to move over from another browser, say like Google Chrome, you could import your browser data right from this profile section. Okay, let's move to the privacy search and devices section. There's a few interesting things in here. First of all, if you want to control how much Edge can track your browsing, you could uh, enable some tracking prevention options in here. I'm not going to go into too much detail there. Uh, if you wanted to clear your browsing data, this is where you can do it. So you could choose what to clear. You could say, you know, I want to clear my history, my download history, my cookies, and my cache. And then you can choose the time range that you'd like to clear it for. So you could select all time and then hit the clear now button if you wanted to. I'm just going to cancel that for now, however. There's one more option here in the privacy search and services section I want to show you. It's an important one and it's kind of hidden. So if we scroll all the way to the bottom here, and notice that there's this option that says address bar and search. And well, you know, Edge is made by Microsoft. So by default, they force us to use Bing search and then they hide, they bury this option in their settings to make it hard to change. But I like Google when it comes to search. So I want to change it to Google. So I'm just going to click on the address bar and search section. And in here, you'll notice it's also at the bottom. I mean, they really tried to bury it. We have this option to manage search engines. We go in here and you'll notice that right now Bing is selected. It's recommended in default, but we want Google. So I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to click on the three little dots next to Google and I'm going to select make default. So now if we go up here and we just search for my website again, you'll notice that it is a Google search and that's, that's what I prefer. But again, that's up to you. I thought it was important to show you that. However, let's move over to the appearance section. Now there's a few cool things in here. So first of all, we can customize our toolbar. So one option is we can show a home button. So if we enable that option, you'll notice that a home button now appears up here. And for Google Chrome users, this looks very similar. It's the same symbol, just like the back, forward, and refresh buttons. Uh, so here in our settings, we could then go down here and it says, you know, where do we want our home button to go? By default right now, it goes to a new tab page, but we could enter a specific URL so I could enter my website. So at any time, I open a new tab here in Edge, it will go to my website. You could make it your email, you could make it whatever you want. 
down below we have a few other options. I think one of them that's uh, kind of cool is we have this option to show a share button. So that just adds a button up here at the top right. Uh, we're not on an actual website right now, we're in our settings, but if we were on a website, we could then share this website uh, with a few different options, one of them being email. So that's a good way to easily share sites if you find yourself sending people links a lot and that sort of thing. Okay, let's move to the on startup section here in the settings. So we can decide what we want to be displayed to us when we first start up Edge. By default, it's a new tab page, but I actually like the option to continue where you left off. So you can just hit the X and close out of Edge, and when you open it back up again, all of the tabs and windows that you had open will come right up. Additionally, you could open a specific page or set of pages. So uh, one thing you can do is uh, notice that we have this option here that says use all open tabs. So if you wanted, say, five different pages to appear when you first start up Edge, just go to those five different pages in different tabs, then come in here to your settings and hit the button that says use all open tabs. That's a lot easier than entering them all manually here in the settings. But again, I like the continue where you left off option, so I'm going to leave that for now. Okay, so uh, you notice there's some other sections in here. You could customize the new tab page a little more if you wanted to. Uh, you can customize your downloads, your cookies and site permissions. But again, I'm not going over all of this. Uh, there are a few other things I want to take a look at, though. The first is the phone and other devices section. In here, uh, you'll notice it says that Microsoft Edge is available on Android, iOS, Windows, and Mac OS, which I mentioned earlier in the tutorial. So if you have your mobile device and you want to install Edge for either your Android or iOS device, you can just open up a QR code reader on your device, come in here, read this QR code, and that will take you to the download page uh, for Edge on either iOS or Android. So that's an easy way to get the app for your other devices. And then the last option here in settings is the About section. And this is just a useful way to see what version of Edge you're running. So I'm running version 87 point something, right? <laughs> it's one of the 87s. So that's just good to know if you're trying to like troubleshoot a problem or something, always good to know what version you're running. So that should cover all of the primary features of using the Microsoft Edge web browser. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. And if you want to see more technology tips and tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have for now. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.